Okay, another day back at it. So, I was going to put the radiator back in today, and then I remembered I took the exhaust off. So, kind of want to do that before I put the radiator in because the front exhaust is really hard to get to without taking the radiator off. So, might as well put the exhaust back in, even though it does have a little ding in it. Everything I can find says it doesn't really matter. So, you know, if I could have found a cheap one on eBay, I might have waited for it, but I couldn't find one anywhere. Um, so it's just going to go back on. It's going to have the new shields on it anyway to cover that, but uh, it would have been nice to be able to replace it. Yeah, it is what it is, right? So I think I'm going to come down in here today and get the exhaust back in there. That exhaust gasket came out when I pulled the exhaust out here's your other one and that exhaust did not come out or the exhaust gasket ring so I'm gonna try a heat gun see if I can get that to heat up remember they're designed to operate at very high temperatures so put a heat gun on it it might expand just enough to let that slide out because I do have new ones to put in there and then I'm gonna clean these up and bolt all that back together metal polish and some buffing wheels See if I can't get that surface rust. That looks quite a bit better. A few moments later. So one thing I did do when I ordered was I did order new ones of these bolts because these are really rusted. And uh, could probably clean them and put them back, but uh, I'm not going to. I just replace them. All right, and this is not a wire wheel. This is just, it's like a uh, scotch pad on my Dremel tool here. And I forget what that little connector is called. There's a special type of connector so it can pop off and on without having to get the chuck out and all that. But I like these little wheels for polishing things. Works really good. You can get it in some pretty small places. Old one, new one. The old nuts and the new nuts. Oh wait, <laughs> I gotta put the exhaust hanger back on there first. So 50 foot pounds on this. Which, see, that's really not a lot, right? There we go. Okay, now like I said before, you can take one of those markers and put dots on them. And I'll just take it, put dots straight up. That straight up. Here is our radiator. This is the fan, right? This is that hose that connects around on the bottom. This is the one that comes all the way across and it has the rip right here. So this is the new one that they sent me. So we basically have got to get that on there. The best way to get these off I found is with a pair of basically pliers that you can open to the right amount. Squeeze them really tight and then just kind of wiggle them back and forth till you get them they need to be completely off of the metal, right? Because the metal comes up here and has like a little lip in it. Um, I'll show you in just a second. And then take it and twist it around. And then start lifting. There we go. So hopefully you'll be able to see that little lip right there. So that's the part that you want to make sure the clip is on the other side of. Because then even with the expansion, it won't be able to slide off. That little lip is what prevents it from sliding off, backing out. 
One thing you have to be careful of is measure the diameter of these. Whenever you get a new one, they do stretch out over time sometimes, but there are multiple sizes of these. So if you get one that's, let's say, two millimeters bigger in diameter than the one that's supposed to be there, it'll slide off easier than what it should. You don't want that. Because then I can make sure I get them in a good grip right here, right here. See how they're not going to come flying out when I squeeze. Usually I also, let me go get my red rubber grease. I coat it in red rubber grease to make these easier to slide up and down. I also put a little red rubber grease on the inside. Keeps it supple, but also makes it easier to slide on and off. Let me go grab that. Red rubber grease is a good way to condition your hoses and clean them and then just take a hose and, and wipe them off. Take a rag, I'm sorry. So now that we have this like that, squeeze it. Get it up in there. Make sure it comes all the way up around again. Because again, we got to get this on here. Hopefully you can see that. So right about there is where the old line was. I'm assuming that's about where it's going to have to go. Usually you want about, I think it's two millimeters on either side of wherever the clamp goes. Um, I like to make sure I can get to the clamps. Like see how that one was rotated. Yeah, brand new hose clips can be a little bit of a pain to get back over that hump. Whoop, went too far. Just make sure it's on this side of the hose, on this side of that little bump. And then release. Move it down just a little bit. There we go. Now this is supposed to sit right up against that fan like that. Okay, before you put the radiator back in here, remember to reset up your uh, O2 sensor. Okay, a couple things from the last time I did this that were a real pain in the butt. Um, sorry about that. Let me turn that light off. Uh, and hopefully I can save you a little bit of pain here. This top hose right here off the top has to go up through here to connect to where the radiator goes. Now, I could not get that to fit while it was on. I had to pull the hose off, feed it through, and then try to slide that snap ring back over it while it was up there. It was a pain in the butt. I'm gonna try to do that again, but once you get this hose on, the one that crosses over and then it connects over there, once you get that one on, it'll actually hold the radiator in place. Now you do need to take the two little rubber mounts, these two, that go up on top, up here, and they just fit up in there like that. They're just held in place there's there's no screws or anything that they're, they're just anti-dampening basically see how it goes up in there like that hopefully you can see that so they just go up in here and they just squeeze in there hopefully uh, this is going to go better than last time last time it took me a long time to get it in there um but hey that was the first time i'd ever done it it's going to be better this time right um because this is the 2016 model and it has this extra little uh, oil cooler That hose is going to go here. I'm not going to worry about that one first first thing I'm going to try to do is get these uh, rubber uh, Bushings up in there into the right spot and then I'm going to focus on this one right here There we go. GoPro battery died again if nothing else I know, before I start the riding season, I am going to have to buy more GoPro batteries. These are only two years old, though. And I'm only getting, like, 30 minutes of battery life out of them right now. So, that's pretty pathetic. Anyway, so, these two bolts are what hold that bracket in. This one has to come back out later in order to put the little plastic shroud over. I'm going to leave it off for now. So, I can start putting the foot controls back on. I can put the rear brake back on. So because I don't actually want to have to replace another hose, I'm going to just wrap this like that, put this on there, job done, right? Now no fluid will go down that direction. Now let me just double check and make sure all my hoses are connected. Indian 50-50 premix coolant, and here comes the hard part. 
So this is what I used last time. Because you can only get a very little bit in there at a time by putting this down in there and injecting it and then burping it, I was able to control the flow. Hopefully it works again this time. I put this down in the bottle. Put this in here. Start slowly injecting it. And as it gets full, burp, burp. A little more, burp, burp. A few moments later. So you add a little to get it up. You do CPR. And what you'll start seeing is as I add fluid here, see how it's coming up out of the breather hole now? That's how you know you're starting to get really full. But you're going to have to let it sit. Every time that happens, let it sit for... I don't know, four or five minutes. Usually I just go inside and come back out. Um, see if you can get it to burp. See, there's another air bubble. And then just keep adding and keep adding. And this is the kind of the end game here where you're trying to get the final little burps of uh, air out of the system. Now I have actually taken a, a hose to that and sucked air out of it before. I don't think it actually helped at all, so I don't know if I'd recommend that or not. Um, okay, now let's do something a little bit fun. This is the s, &S air filter. It's going to sit right here. They give you a T to go right in here. And then this you have to cut to fit. So you actually don't end up needing this hose because they give you one. Drop that. Now, put this on here. Just slides in there. Make sure you have the metal band around it. I left my metal band this way so that I can actually reach it easily. Okay, friends, I am really tired. It is about 6 p.m. Sunday night, and I probably spent eight hours out here today and probably 12 hours yesterday. I'm pretty tired. But we did actually get quite a bit done. Radiator is back in. Uh, the radiator fluid is in. SNS air filters on. The air hose is in there. All this is all buttoned up now. I need to put the side brace on. And then probably the exhaust neck so I can start it and verify the, uh, that it actually burped correctly. And there's no leaks. But that'll have to be another day because I am too tired. I uh, hope you had a good day wherever you are. And hope this finds you well. Bye.